Yes, it is true, it is happening. We are finally in the era of Secret Invasion, and if you are a hardcore Marvel fan like I am, then you have probably been looking forward to this show ever since it was announced. I mean, with the OG S.H.I.E.L.D. super spy vibes and the amazing cast and the Quake rumors, Oh my god, there's just been so much to be excited about and it's finally here. Every Disney Plus Marvel show so far has just exceeded my expectations and they're all just so amazing in very unique ways. No show is quite like the other. So I am so excited to get into this and react to the very intense and mysterious and action-packed first episode of Secret Invasion. I will be reacting to the entire season so be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you know as soon as those videos come out. I'm of course manifesting Daisy Sky Johnson's back Badass return to the MCU as Quake in Secret Invasion, so I'm wearing my Daisy-inspired Destroy Our Worlds t-shirt that I made for my Marvel merchandise shop called We Could Be Heroes Designs. The link is in the description below if you want to check out my shop after this video, and let's get into Secret Invasion episode 1 called Resurrection. Hi, chills! Literally any time I see this Marvel logo intro, you know it's gonna be good. Present day. That is so funny. I love how it says present day instead of the actual year because I'm not even sure Marvel at this point knows what year it's supposed to be. I guess if it's like a yearish after the blip, it's no later than 2025, I guess. I'll be right there. Don't move. Ooh. We love a good burner phone moment in a super spy show that's so funny. This already has Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. vibes and I love it. Imagine a world where information can't be trusted. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> Not very hard, is it? <laughs> they knew that we would be thinking that. Oh, this is good. What if the ones closest to us? Oh, this is so creepy. The ones we've trusted our whole lives. Oh my God. We're someone else entirely. What if they weren't even human? <gasps> But what if they're inhuman? What if in a later episode, Daisy Johnson comes in and they're like, what are you, a scroll seeing her superpowers? And she's like, I'm inhuman. <laughs> oh my God, that would be so cool. I would scream, I'm manifesting it. I am manifesting it. Each one claimed by a different group. It's business as usual. That's precisely what they want you to think. This guy gives me like Murray vibes from Stranger Things, you know, like with the wall of clues and the superstition and the paranoia of things that actually turn out to be literally exactly right or well, sort of right, you know, like they're onto something. You think the same people are behind all of this? Not people. Scrolls. <laughs> Scrolls. He obviously does not like them. Okay. <laughs> That's barely enough to. To what? You have no goddamn idea what you're talking about, Ross. There could be thousands of them, tens of thousands, and you would never know. Oh. This being my second time watching this is so cool because I can notice that the scroll pretending to be Ross is so good. Like he's sitting there listening to this guy explain the scroll's like entire plan and he's playing it so cool. You think it's Ross, but you can see it on his face right here. He's like, dang it, we've been made. Then where is Fury? He's on saver. God, and if I'm gonna bring him down for, for whatever the hell this is, <laughs> I need to give him something more than just theories. I need evidence. Okay, that squirrel is really good. He's literally getting Prescott to hand him all of the evidence he has on the squirrels. <laughs> the squirrel's like, he can't possibly know everything that we're about to do. Oh, <laughs> his face. He's like, act fool, act fool, act fool, act fool. <laughs> I stopped filing reports at the office. I don't know who I can trust anymore, other than you. <gasps> now the scroll knows that no one else knows about this. Uh, Prescott is giving him everything. This is crazy. This one scene alone is showing how big of a threat the scrolls and their ability to shapeshift are. Hey, Prescott, look, I'm here to help. <laughs> okay, so, so let me take this and I'll give the information oh. to Fury. <laughs> I'm so glad that Prescott at least saw through the scroll in that moment. That That's actually impressive that he did see through the scroll's disguise. Oh, this is so crazy. Cause we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. Okay, that car was not very safe. <laughs> I need an extract fast. I need an extract. Yes. <laughs> yes, Maria, you badass warrior queen. <laughs> oh my God, the music. Oh, the lights. Oh my God, this is good. This is so creepy. Rukia. Yes, love her. Talos. It's me. That is so crazy. Oh my God, that's crazy. He was one of you. Aw. Nah, he's, he, he's one of them. Ah! 
Wow, oh my God, that is, that's an intro. That's a good intro, oh my God. The fact that the very first thing said on the show is what if you couldn't trust anyone and they proved that within the first few minutes. Okay, well, yay, way to set the vibe of the show. This is intense, this is good. Fury, he's so good at intros. He's so good at like, I'm here. <laughs> Welcome back to Earth. Aww. How long have they not seen each other? I am so sorry. So I love you. Aww. But she worries me that it would take something like this to bring you back to Earth. Okay, I'm getting the feeling that his wife knew too much and I'm betting Tylos isn't the only scroll she told that to. Like, what if she was genuinely concerned about Fury and everything and she was like, I bet it would take an extinction level event to bring Fury back to Earth and Gravik and the bad scrolls took that idea literally and seriously and that's what gave them the idea for the war. Soren knew too much and she was investigating and that's why Gravik had her killed. There is a high possibility that all of this is very personal. Like, what if Gravik and the Bad Scrolls wanted Fury to come back. Maybe they blame him for not finding them a planet to live on yet. I don't know. I don't know what their motive is, but I feel like they specifically wanted Nick Fury back on Earth so that they can hurt him, hurt the people he cares about, shown at the end of this episode. I don't know. This is crazy, but I feel like it's personal. After the blip, you were different. Well, yeah, no kidding. He literally survived an extinction level event. Like, of course he's different. Duh. <laughs> Cal Danvers disappeared. And so did Gaia. Hold it. Aww. Your daughter disappeared to where? She was young. Mm. Angry that our people still don't have a home. That's so sad that Talos has basically lost everyone and everything that's important to him and now guy is gone and he and it's so sweet that he's like she was young like I, I understand her he's not mad he just wants her back this is what agent ross's imposter was trying to cover up schematics for a dirty bomb intercepted by press god okay scrolls can change into anyone but this scroll who was pretending to be agent ross had his phone and his contact to maria so does that mean that they have the real ross captured somewhere like are fury and maria and talos like worried about that or or i guess they think that they'll find the real ross where they find gravik and the other squirrels i guess we brought you here for a reason if he succeeds um your species will cease to exist okay <laughs> Going for a walk he stood up like he was gonna like say something or like say a speech or something and he's like i'm going for a walk i'm done <laughs> i'm done with this right now wait do you see maria's face why do, why does it look like she's like trying not to laugh mm -hmm. Rody. Like we don't to, see him enough we don't see him enough abandoned departed agent fury is building up hey it's him okay i know he's a, like a famous actor but all i know him from is gavin from friends and as just as fancy man Russell from New Girl. The only man that Nick and Jess both ever loved. The only man we both loved? Russell! Hey. <laughs> That's funny. Were well, you lot extraordinary? Oh, you must be finally putting it all together. Well done. <laughs> okay, you can go. That's, that'll do. <laughs> extraordinary. Well, that's wonderful. Oh my God. Uh, she's hilarious. I love her, unless she's evil. She would be a very good villain, but I hope she stays like sort of good. She's hilarious. You know, I may not know when a scroll is pretending to be a human, <laughs> but I sure as hell know when a human is lying. <laughs> you know damn well what was in that storage vault. The fact that you don't know tells me all I need to know about this new, rather old Nick Fury. Oh. I think Thanos' snap changed you. Why is the fact that the blip changed Fury coming as a shock to everyone? This is kind of getting on my nerves. Like, of course the blip changed Fury. He had to go through this terrifying, world-ending traumatic event. Like, no kidding he's changed after it. That's not even a bad thing. It can make him more careful, which can actually make him better at his job. Everyone using this whole the blip changed you thing as an insult to Fury is really annoying. I love it in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. in season one whenever Phil Coulson is telling Melinda May, like, I feel different after getting stabbed through the heart by Loki and dying and coming back to life. And May tells Coulson, you feel different because you are different. And then she says, there's no way you can go through trauma like that and not come out of it changed. That's why I love Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. so much is that they prove that change is normal <laughs> and natural and it's okay. And it normally leads to amazing things like Daisy Sky Johnson getting her powers. They prove that you're never weak 
for changing after a traumatic event. Like Fitz tells Daisy in season two of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., he says, you're just different now and there's nothing wrong with that. Everyone in Fury's life seriously needs to have just a little bit more empathy for him instead of just making him feel weak because of his trauma. Ugh, it's annoying me. Okay, rant over. <laughs> Take your natural form. Aww. I like the transition of like the hat coming off and then that's cool. When's the last time you ate, Beto? I don't know. That's so sad. It's called me. <laughs> <laughs> we grow only scroll produce here. Thank you. <laughs> you are very welcome. That's so sweet. That's so beautiful. Like them bringing the beauty of their own planet to Earth. I love that. This whole thing is so sad though, for obvious reasons, but I'm also wishing that Marvel didn't make the scrolls out to be bad. I mean, like with anyone, there's good and there's bad, but Marvel making out these scroll refugees to be like, we're gonna kill you all and we're gonna take over your planet after we plunge you into war first. I'm not a fan of that. Like, they just want a home. I mean, like Beto said, he wants home in his own skin. Like, why are they making the bad guys for that? I don't like this idea of choice from Marvel. I swear, if Secret Invasion doesn't end with some kind of like cool, supportive, amazing alliance between the humans and the squirrels, I'm gonna be kind of annoyed. See, they just wanna be safe somewhere. They're not the bad guys. We're over 500 strong now. So, is everyone in the party? The resistance? No, Gravik provides refuge. The warriors keep our human form. The longer we attach to our shells, the less likely we can be identified by humans and scrolls alike. That's a sneaky little thing Marvel did, like to explain why they have normal actors without all the makeup on. This whole thing kind of reminds me of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier series because they're showing both sides of the story. Like Carly and the Flag Smashers, this is a lot like that where they're not technically bad people, they've been through pain and trauma and they show that and they want to help people but obviously them and these warrior scrolls are choosing to do it the very wrong way and they're causing more harm to innocent people and causing more pain and that's what makes them the bad guys. I'm just hoping that Gaia can be reached and she can turn good before it's too late like Carly didn't. Prove your loyalty and Gravik will reward you. Uh, okay, this is such Hydra for the scrolls. The way that Hydra would brainwash people and say your compliance will be rewarded. And she just said, prove your loyalty and Gravik will reward you. Oh my God, this is so Hydra coded. <laughs> Yikes. This is so complicated because I loved Gaia two seconds ago and now I don't like her at all. Because she's amazing to the other scrolls and Beto and she's so nice. I thought she was amazing. and But her face watching this super creepy scene, she doesn't really seem to have like any hesitation or any like smidge of guilt about it. She's just watching him be in pain. I'm, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Do I like her? Do I not? I don't know what's going on. <laughs> you want to save innocent scrolls. You're going to have to hurt some people. Uh. Look, mm. Gravik knows that mercy's your weakness. Time for you to prove him wrong. What? Hmm? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Okay, that was cute. That was a cute Maria and Fury moment. I like that moment. But also this is the side of Fury that I don't like. Cause in season two of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. they're all about to fight Hydra and Bobby tells Coulson that Fury would have a number of acceptable losses. And this scene kind of shows that. But Coulson tells Bobby that his number of acceptable losses is zero and he doesn't want to hurt anyone. And he's a lot like Talos in that way. Like they have mercy and that's their strength not their weakness. I miss Coulson so much. I love him. I actually just reacted to Coulson's final goodbye in the season five finale of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So I'll link that here if you want to check that out after you watch this video. It was quite a beautifully tragic emotional roller coaster. Not even 40 in human years. I haven't even gone on my midlife crisis shopping spree yet. What you get for yours? The Avengers. <laughs> Yeah, that's about as good as a midlife crisis shopping spree can go. <laughs> I love Maria's outfit in this so much. Like it's so practical and so cool. It's definitely like the new Marvel where women can wear practical, normal, casual clothes that they can actually work and fight in. Like her boots aren't heels at all and her sweatshirt is zipped up all the way and I love it and it's literally the bare minimum that women in Marvel can ask for is to be comfortable and practical while they kick butt. So, and she looks good. Anyways, so I love it. I love the power walk. 
The power walk is so good. <laughs> Yikes. Oh, she is holding her own. Maria is holding her own against the squirrel. Yes. I love this. Well, she was. She was holding her own against the squirrel. What do you got? She. <laughs> I love how she doesn't say anything else. She's just like, she, go. <laughs> Oh, that's so sad for him. Her last words? Fine, Gaia. How? Why don't you ask the people that you work for? This is so dark and sad for both of them. This is horrible. Because for Talos, like, he just found out that his daughter is, like, being responsible for violence, which he is so against. And for Gaia, she's so torn on who the good guys are and who the bad guys are and who to work for and who to help and who's doing it for the right cause. Like, I can see this taking her quite a while to, like, decide what to do, but this must be so confusing for her. Oh, Oh, this is tragic for her. She's definitely gonna want to avenge her mom now. Vodka. This seems like a bar that they would do a parting shot in, like the spies goodbye, maybe for Fury. Interesting, interesting. Making friends with the locals? <laughs> <laughs> Spooks like me, bad shot. You can't say that. No, you can't say that. <laughs> She's like, accurate? That's very true. <laughs> I love their friendship. You always told me there is no shame in walking away when the steps are uncertain. Mm. So check your footing. Otherwise someone's gonna get hurt. <gasps> oh no! Like her? Oh my God. Cause then she gets hurt. Oh, the foreshadowing. Oh my God. Oh, that's so sad. Oh. This is like on Hawkeye when he has the flashbacks. This is very interesting how they're showing the trauma of having been blipped. I love how Marvel doesn't usually forget to show sides of the story. Like they show a big event from like all different angles. They showed the Avengers point of view rescuing everyone. They showed normal people who weren't blipped and lived through it. And now they're showing the people who were blipped and have trauma from it. Like Monica Rambeau or Sam Wilson and Bucky or now Fury. It's just very interesting to see everyone's different point of views. Your mom would be very proud of you, you know, for Oh, I'm so glad that guy is like being reached and is able to be good. Pine of ours with infrared spray. Infrared, got it. But she sprays the decoy bags, not the bags with the actual weapons. So was that on purpose by Gaia? Did she do that or is someone playing her too? Did Gravik know about Gaia's meeting with Talos and trick her? If he did trick her and this wasn't all like planned by Gaia, then I'm worried about her when she gets back to New Skrullis. Like he's gonna be mad. Oh my God. That's terrifying. That is the creepiest part of this entire episode so far. Oh my gosh. The way that he's just watching him is so terrifying. He's like, follow me. Oh my God. Okay, that is so freaking creepy. The fact that he was watching Fury throughout the entire time, this is so creepy. Oh my God. Okay, this is definitely one of the darkest, most intense Disney Plus Marvel shows so far. This is like serious and terrifying. No, 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 no. Oh my God. The fact that Gravik did that to her looking like Fury is completely psychopathic. He did it to lower Maria's guard so that he could hit her, but like also to scare her in her final moments. Like it's sick. And the way Gravik pretended to be Fury to like give Fury, the real Fury, some messed up metaphor about how the real Fury is to blame for Maria's death. It's so messed up. That's terrifying. <gasps> he smiled at him. Oh my God, the way Gravik is actually enjoying this. No, 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 no. You. It was you. The way she's shaking. Oh my God, 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 oh my God. Oh my God. That last visual is so sick. Was that Talos who pulled Fury away from Maria? Like, why Why would he do that? Maybe it was just someone trying to clear the area and help people? I don't know, oh my God. Okay, 
Oh my God, I am so conflicted right now because I am never 100% buying that Maria is actually gone until they confirm it in the next episode, which I hope, I hope, I hope they do not confirm it. If she actually is gone, I'ma be pretty mad at Marvel. I mean, for one, Secret Invasion was so exciting, partially because Maria Hill has always been a side character. And I know we were all so excited when we found out that Maria would be like in a leading role and we get to see her character shine. And if they just took that away from us? Nah, -uh, not okay, not okay. Maria has been in Marvel movies for literally how long and for them to just end her character within like 30 seconds. I mean, that is, that is not the ending you give to a character as iconic and badass as Maria Hill. Second, if they killed off Maria, one of the MCU's original and most amazing women for the sole purpose of making the man's Fury storyline more meaningful and impactful, I'm gonna be real mad because that is so overdone and sexist. We see that so much lately. Like I will never forgive Marvel for ruining Wanda Maximoff's incredible character in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, making her a villain just so that Doctor Strange, the man could grow and become stronger and become even more of a hero. I mean, they just threw Wanda's what, seven years of amazing character development in the trash just so that Doctor Strange could have a better story. And I can totally see Marvel doing this again with Secret Invasion, saying that they killed off Maria just so that Fury could become like more motivated or stronger or become more of a hero. Maria is not just a random character that you can sacrifice to make the man look better. I don't like it, I don't like it. I've been talking to a lot of people since this episode came out and yeah, we're all in agreement that we need Maria and Marvel needs Maria, like she better come back. And surprise, we already we have a way for Maria to come back. Can you guess what it is? Yes, it is Tahiti. And guess who still has Cree blood in her system that she can give to Maria to save her? Daisy Sky Johnson. Daisy is literally perfect to come in and save Maria. It would be so amazing and badass. We already know that there is a chance that someone in Secret Invasion has been in contact with the current director of S.H.I.E.L.D., Alfonso McKenzie. If you didn't know or just don't remember, in the series finale of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., there is a time jump where Mac tells everyone that he is dealing with a classified situation going on in Moscow. Like, oh my god, mind blown when I realized this reference, I freaked out. I have not stopped freaking out. I mean, how cool would it be if Matt came in in Secret Invasion and the past and the current directors of S.H.I.E.L.D. interacted? Oh my god, that'd just be so cool. And Matt can bring Daisy in. It's just such an awesome full circle thing that probably will not happen, but should. <laughs> It's just so perfect that Fury could end up saving Maria the same way that Coulson saved Skye, Daisy, when she got shot in season one. I posted a YouTube short yesterday of an edit I made of how similar the parallels are between the scenes where Maria gets shot and Daisy gets shot, and I made this photo for closer reference. It's crazy how similar these scenes are like visually and emotionally and cinematically and how the camera work was done and what clips they showed. They're so alike that it has me thinking that it was either intentional leading up to Fury saving Maria with Daisy's Cree blood, like the Tahiti project, or it is just the biggest coincidence ever. <laughs> I'm obviously hoping that Daisy comes back and Maria can be saved. Well, I think it's safe to say that episode one of Secret Invasion was a freaking roller coaster. Overall, I think it's really good and very different than what other Marvel shows have been doing lately. I'm so glad it could be more dark and mysterious and intense and with super high stakes. And obviously that was all shown very clearly by that insane ending. It's really giving me major Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D super spy vibes, so if Daisy was gonna come back to the MCU in any Marvel show, I think Secret Invasion would be a pretty great show for her to like make her grand quake return in. <laughs> she would just make Marvel so much more powerful and badass and legendary, and especially if we're not gonna have Wanda Maximoff around it very much anymore, having Quake, the destroyer of worlds back in the MCU would just be so amazing, I can't even explain. <laughs> if you love this video, be sure to like it and subscribe to my channel and comment what your thoughts were for Secret Invasion episode one. Did you like it or do you have any wild predictions or theories for future episodes? What did you think of that ending? Let me know. Remember to check out my merchandise shop called We Could Be Heroes Designs at the link in the description below if you love heroic merch inspired by Marvel, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Teen Wolf, or Outer Banks. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and TikTok at We Could Be Heroes Designs so that we can just fangirl together over Secret Invasion all the time, and I will catch you in my next video. Bye!